the Guardians, the Hooded Figures, the Portal Watchers. All names for these mysterious figures who have been watching us since Warcraft 2, right? We've all noticed them, they've been on the login screen, but they've never had an explanation. Until now. You know, we'd suspected that maybe these were tied to Midi because of his role in the creation of the Dark Portal. But no, they're not on his portal. Uh, perhaps they're Shadow Council members, right? Pawns of the Legion. Maybe. But the actual explanation puts the origin of these way, way, way back. Before Medivh, before the Horde, or even before the Legion itself. Between them and some other knowledge, we can actually learn a hell of a lot about what is going on with the current lore and all these different characters. You're going to learn a lot today. And if you would like to start a cosmic conspiracy of your own, then you're going to need an awesome website with today's sponsor, squarespace.com forward slash bellular gaming. You'll get a month's free trial, which is awesome, and then with the code Bellyther Gaming, you'll get 10% off your first purchase. The link is down below. Now it's simple. Squarespace are the fastest and easiest way to get a great looking site built quickly. It's as simple as that. I built this showcase site for our Patreon loot in about 40 minutes, sitting on the sofa with my iPad, and it took barely any time to just add e-commerce on top of that. Their award-winning templates are simply awesome, just letting you hit the ground running real quick with something that looks great, but of course, with the room to customize later. Now, your site is what people see of you online, so do you want your portfolio to stand out if you're applying to a company? Well, then a gorgeous, clean, content-first website is going to, it's what you need. It'll put your best foot forward. But there's more. Want a site for your business? You know, personal site, e-commerce stuff? all in Squarespace, and they've even started a new memberships feature. With all this, you get their excellent site builder, very easy to use tools, and all those incredible templates to get you started. So start your free trial, squarespace.com forward slash Bellular Gaming, using code Bellular Gaming for 10% off your first purchase. Thank you to Squarespace for supporting the channel, for supporting this lore content. With that said, let's go, let's get started. Corthia has revealed much, especially with the ever-living statuettes uncovering. A mysterious, whispering statue, one that, if scaled up, well, would fit right in on the Dark Portal. Many of us believe that the statue speaks lies, but some of us have read the works of Alpharim, the seemingly mad broker researcher who, curiously, the author of Grimoire of the Shadowlands, thinks isn't actually as mad as he's made out to be. And this is important because Alpharim's report explains the content of the statue's whispers in a way. And with their meaning made clear, the implications, I think, point to rather huge lore that digs right to the core of the Warcraft setting. So, let's get into Alpharim's expedition report. As if Shadowlands didn't make it clear enough already, the broker home ground of Tazavesh shows their insatiable thirst for knowledge. Not just any knowledge, though. They seek ancient truths of their origin, of existence. Now, scattered throughout Tazavesh is Alpharim's six-part journal. He begins somewhere outside of the cosmos, at the sepulchre of the first ones, the sepulchre of knowledge. That's the place everyone's been looking for, including Zoval. And Alpharim confirms that it's first ones at origin, even discovering their fractal language. A language the meaning of which constantly changes. Yet, yeah, that's the challenge Alpharim rises to. He cracks the code, he learns the language, and what he learns he calls the dawn of all things. What is the dawn of all things? Well, before the cosmos was as we know it, there were primal forces. Forces which we don't even have language to describe. Now, these forces interacted and clashed in an infinite way until from that soup, six great powers arose. And the first ones come into this. There is a seventh power. Now, Alpharim couldn't figure out what the seventh power is. Alpharim calls it a geometric artifact of the fractals. Essentially, my read is maybe it's the, the gaps, the in-between of the forces, the, the remnant, a sort of fingerprint of creation that you can't overtly see but is there. The six powers that rose each gave a portion of themselves, and that gave rise 
to a design. Six realms, many intersections. And this is where we get to light, void, order, disorder, life, and death. But we must remember that there is a seventh. So that's a big thing that we learn. There is something going on before the six forces that we know. This involves the primals, and potentially there is a seventh force as well. Those are our key learnings. Now it's time to see what the statue has to say. Right, so now that we're aware of Alvarim's big discovery, what of the statuette and the whispers from it? Well, first, this statuette is found on a moss-worn general, and that does mean that the statuette is probably aware of the Jailer's plans. Not only that, but there is a possible Nathrazim connection, and that means that this thing has seen the big Nathrazim cosmic war from the inside. So, let's see what the statue's got to say. Hidden from daylight, a sleeping flame rests atop the sixth tree. Okay, six has been a significant number, right? There's six cosmic forces, maybe a seventh, but it's hidden and a bit spooky. Uh, there's the six big eternals of the Shadowlands. There's plenty of sixes in the Warcraft universe. Now, with this, I would say that flames are often used to represent knowledge. And the idea of hidden knowledge and the force of death would fit Zoval's plan. If so, it would also align with the expedition report telling us that the sepulchre is somewhere outside of the cosmos, you know, hidden from daylight. And that sepulchre, of course, you know, we're going for a hidden flame, hidden knowledge. Now, there is another read of this. Maybe you could say the world trees, of which there is five, but one of them, Vordrasil, it was made from the sixth branch of Nordrasil. So a sleeping flame resting atop the self-proclaimed god of death's world tree would be a little bit interesting given how Ice Crown Citadel might actually even be Zoval's entryway to Azeroth. I'm probably going to go for the cosmic forces and secret uh, knowledge answer though. Hope, betrayal, sacrifice, faces change, the tale does not. To be honest, I think this one's mostly general flavor. WoW is full of cycles of, well, these things. You could see this as a hint towards Arthas and Anduin's parallels, or, now that we've seen the fate of Sylvanas, even her situation. The Jailer preyed upon her fears and hopes, he wasn't honest with her, she has now betrayed him, and you could very well see her sacrifice herself, or her freedom, to take him down. But okay, there's more to get into. We have a duo of lines. So many secrets, so little time. A city of secrets, a history of lies. So this is a reference to Corthia itself, city of secrets. But it feels like everything is accelerating here, you know? We know that there are Nathrazim in Corthia, and we know that the Nathrazim are the Jailer's big cosmic super agents, or at least they were before the Jailer betrayed Nathrius. Now, we suspect that they're all zeroing in on the sepulchre of the first ones. Time is kind of running out on us, really, and we shouldn't trust everything we discover, because if the City of Secrets has a history of lies, then that implies that the true past of this city is hidden from us, that Corthia's secrets may lead us astray, that what we see is maybe not exactly what was. And I think all of this is working to sow our doubts in the purpose, in the being of the beings of the Shadowlands, what they're actually set up to do, and that all exists to sow seeds of doubt in our progenitors, the first ones, who Blizzard are clearly trying to build up in the lore. How many voices do you heed? How many are real? Okay, this line honestly is frustratingly vague. Um, I think it could have something to do with the cosmic forces themselves. I mean, think about it. We have the void whispering in our ear, the light in our heart. We've got our cane at our fingertips. We've got all these things influencing us. We're getting whispers from many, many different sources. You know, with this statue, we're getting whispers from something aligned with death. But there is something far larger to talk about in this next whisper. The seventh covets what the six hold fast, the fulcrum wavers, all will be undone. This final, rather apocalyptic whisper can be taken two ways. 
The first, more immediate reading is that the Jailer is seeking something that the other six Eternal Ones uh, perhaps hold fast. That would be counting, say, the Arbiter, Archon, Primus, uh, Sire, Winter Queen, and maybe even like her sister Elun, you know, holding fast. That's the sort of thing that honestly to me is a bit of a stretch. I don't think it's the other Eternals. I mean, the Sire sort of was working with the Jailer, the Arbiter is basically just a machine, and Elune is sort of nowhere to be found. I mean, obviously she's cropped up very recently, but she's not really a Shadowlands entity, it would seem. Now, I think the second and far more compelling reading of this is that the seventh undefinable power force figure uh, in Alpharim's report, that that seventh thing is coveting what the other six hold fast. So could this seventh geometric artifact, you know, be, if you're to take some Tolkien inspiration, the note of discord and the song of the Ainur, right? You know, and the, you know, Melkor sort of sings discord into the song of creation, and that has many ripple effects that define the Tolkien universe. You could say that there's something going on here that, you know, primarily it's these six forces, but there's this seventh. We don't really understand it. We don't really know what it does, but it almost certainly has had an impact on everything. Now, you get the point, though. It is that there is a seventh force and that it wants something. Now, a fulcrum. A fulcrum is basically the point around which a lever operates, or a lot more broadly, it is kind of like just an essential part of something. So, the fulcrum wavers. It's like the essential, central part of what the six hold fast is wavering. What is that? Well, this is something that could go multiple different ways. The Shadowlands, as an example, don't exist in the natural form, right? Because the Shadowlands was just this infinite sort of vastness. But all of these realms and systems of anima harvesting, those were created on top of whatever the Shadowlands naturally was by the first ones. We then say, to what end? Because in the Broker's cosmology chart, you know, life and death seem to be the most important parts of a great cycle. Is that great cycle the fulcrum? Does anima underpin this whole thing? Does it fuel the fulcrum of what the six hold fast? Well, with the final phrase being, all will be undone, it very much seems like Zoval's plans are tying into this whole thing of the seventh coveting what the six hold fast. I mean, especially if we understand that Zoval is a rogue entity of death and that our gang of Eternals are part of the six you know, they're aligned with the six forces, one of them, death, that the Whisper references. It does make you wonder, is Soval actually working for some other force or something? Could this be maybe a first reference of a true evil underpinning this setting? I mean, perhaps. When the Statuette Whispers all will be undone, I think it meant it in the fullest sense. Now, we have a lot more digging to do in this statue, so let's journey to Ravendreth. Well, we sure have been through some deep, heady stuff, uh, but strap in, it's going to get a little bit more mysterious before it gets more clear. Look at the ever-living statuette. Is it familiar? Well, if you've paid attention in Ravendreth, then it surely will be, for similar statues are everywhere. I mean, look at this cinematic. These statues flank to Nathrius as he ruptures the bowels of Nathria, unleashing all of that stockpiled anima into the maw. And there you go, two big, ever-living statuette-looking dudes just looming over him. And throughout Revendreth, many gardens and chambers have them. They're also outside the Tower of the Unseen Guest. You know, Unseen Guest, it's one of the uh, labels used to refer to the Nath regime, and there's just these spooky statues near their tower. Look at this one in particular, with the shoulder pads and the sword pointed downwards. We've seen that before as well. It has been right in front of us the whole time. The statues at the Dark Portal. The same ones are seen presiding over many of Azeroth's darkest, most spooky places. I mean, they've been in the game since all the way back in Warcraft 2, where they were part of the Altar of Storms building. And it's those same Altars of Storms that we see in the Blasted Lands and the Burning Steppe with the statues. There's even a Void Corrupted Altar in the Twilight Highlands. Now, the first time we canonically saw them um, in front of a portal was in the Curse of the Blood Elves campaign, in front of the uh, Legion-built portals. Then they stood silent and watchful over the Dark Portal for all of these years. But the thing is, that's just Azeroth. 
they're all over Draenor as well. In Outland, we find them in Twilight Ridge, surrounding one of Ner'zhul's original portals. It's actually still guarded by the Shadow Council, who likely erected many of these statues. Turning to their previous stronghold at the Black Temple, and you find huge versions of these hooded figures just all over the place. This one looking particularly ominous. Interestingly though, we only found one of these on AU Draenor. And it's one that's being excavated at Shadow Rise in Shadowmoon Valley. This is the Shadow Council's base, so it checks out. But they're not building the statue. They're digging it out of the ground. And that suggests that the statue predates the Horde. Or perhaps was the victim of Garrosh's anti-Legion purge. You could say that too. But following the connections, it does seem like these statues were based on the Nathrezim or a part of the Nathrezim plan all along. And it does make sense. The Nathrezim are waging a cosmic war against every single force out there, and it's pretty clear they've got the knowledge and technology to travel around the place quite a bit and a lot of intelligence apparatus. But these things spread everywhere. And ultimately, when you just get down to the basics here, there's one through line between all of these statues, and it is the Nathrezim, so that's the read we're going for. Now, of course, we encounter the Nathrezim in patch 9.1. Say, Malganus, he's there. Now, beyond big spoilers, they're basically searching Corthia for clues in finding the Sepulchre of the First Ones, um, you know, which of course is something that Alfarim and Zoval are, uh, you know, if they're to be believed, it's something that holds the power to, you know, rewrite creation. So, let's try to tie this all together and actually make sense of all of this kind of big expanding lore that we've covered today. Time to sort of tie this up in a neat bow. No one knows the true nature of the First Ones, and everything we hear about Corthia leads us to believe that the Attendants don't even know the truth. You know, all they know is the purpose. The Arbiter is a machine, Loon, whose original purpose was as the Winter Queen's counterpart, seemingly went a bit rogue, isn't doing her job anymore, so she's not doing the first one's appointed duty. And then you look out of the Shadowlands and you just sort of think, who else isn't doing their job? What is going on? Because it seems like everyone's working toward some sort of self-appointed task. Um, you know, not what the first one's set out. And it seems like all of this suspicion in the first one's is being set up. No one knows what really what or who the first ones were or what their intentions were. That's probably intentional from Blizzard. Perhaps we only know the history that they want us to know. Alternatively, something could have happened. Maybe with Zoval or this seventh fractal, whatever that could be, that made them abandon our cosmos because our progenitors are gone. We don't know why. And that could mean that their truth has just blurred over time into legend. But regardless, we've got this statue telling us that Corthia is a city of lies. And it feels like those lies are covering some sort of truth about the first ones. That the official story the attendants are giving us is false. Because they don't even know what the truth is. They can't. They're following orthodoxy and programming. Now you look at the shadowlands beings with a lot more agency. The Brokers. They're very interesting because they don't even know their own origins. The weekly dungeon quests show us that the Brokers once had a civilization of sorts, but they were made to forget about it. So, it's been the Brokers since the beginning of the Shadowlands who have had a secret mission to find out some sort of fundamental truth. Is it about their origins? Is it about the First Ones? I would say probably both. And the key thing is they've been seeking the same prize as Zoval. And we're getting to learn a little bit more about what that prize is and all of that creation with the likes of Alfreem's expedition report and the ever-living statuette's whispers. So, yes, between Alfreem and the statue, we've basically learned about there being the, the origins of the six forces, but also there being a seventh force that Alfreem very much did not understand that well. We've been led to believe now that there is more than meets the eye to the first ones. And we've noticed that this statue is very likely Nathrezim in nature, potentially being part of a cosmos-wide network. And that this statue is warning us of things, teasing us things, that are found within Alpharim's expedition report. So, yeah, pretty big, basically. 
So Val hates the first ones. He seeks forbidden knowledge. Corthia is a city of lies. Lies that cover for the first ones. Nobody knows the true nature of those first ones. We only see the history that they have crafted for us. The brokers are in the same boat, not even knowing their own origins, and the attendants only follow the purpose, which is their programming. So basically, just what are we going to uncover in patch 9.2? That's when the answers are going to be for most of the solid questions here, but there will be lingering things such as that seventh force, and we just have to wonder, what the hell could that be? Because right now it's just... Woo! Fractal! Mystery! Go find your lore and Wolfram Alpha. <laughs> I kid. But don't. Go to Squarespace instead, today's sponsor, and make an awesome website. Link down below. Okay, that's it for me. Let me know, what do you think about the Statue's Whisperings? What do you think's going on here? What do you think about Alfrim's Expedition Report? Certainly more for us to dive into over time, but we just kind of wanted to do this to present what I think will be the most relevant now. All right. Take care, have a great day, see you later.